Join us as we return to Valeria in this review of Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. Thank you, Daily Magic Games, for sending us a copy of this game, as well as thanks uh, as a thanks for helping them with their Kickstarter. If us talking about Shadow Kings of Valeria seems at all familiar, uh, thank you for being around long enough. That's because we did preview Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria back in June of 2020. Back then, Daily Magic Games sent us what was very clearly a prototype copy of the game with unfinished in components and rules in prep for their Kickstarter launch. And you can find that preview on the blog, on YouTube, and 100 episodes ago as part of episode 96 on our podcast, Feeling the Heat. It does not feel like it was that long ago. Back then, Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria was a big hit for us, and I had high hopes for the Kickstarter, which did go on to successfully fund the first time around. Now, quite a few months later, a package showed up with my production copy of the game, along with its expansion. Shortly after that, we published an unboxing video and went on to play the game a number of times. From there, we fully planned to review the, um, the sh and show both on our podcast, in here, on the blog, everywhere. But there was a problem. It sold out. You couldn't find a copy of the game anywhere. Now that's changed. Not only is a second printing out there in hobby game stores and online, Daily Magic Games currently, as of this episode being recorded has a Kickstarter running that includes a third printing of the game along with the new expansion. Now, unfortunately for those of you listening at home, it will have ended. There are 40 or so hours left at this point right now. I was hoping to get this out there, but at least for those of you listening live, there are Kickstarter is running now, but knowing daily magic, I'm sure there will be some way to late pledge. Now that the game is actually available, we thought it was about time to actually get a formal review of the production copy of Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria out there. That was designed by Stan Kordonsky and features fantastic artwork by the Miko. It was originally published in 2021 by Daily Magic Games after a successful Kickstarter in 2020. As mentioned, it is currently in its second printing and has a third printing on the way in 2023. This engine building game plays one to five players with games taking about half an hour solo to under two hours for the full player count. Now, Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria is a dice drafting, engine building, worker placement game set in the world of Valeria. In this game, the players take on the role of the baddies who are attacking the kingdom of Valeria. Each player controls a different competing faction, moving their warden around the board, collecting troops, magic, gems, champions, and battle plans which they use to launch attacks on the Kingdom of Valeria. For a look at the components in this dice drafting game, check out our Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria unboxing video on YouTube. Note, Mokra also cracks open Rise of Titans expansion, which was included with the Kickstarter for Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. We'll be covering that expansion in a separate review. Now, what surprised me most when cracking open the finished production version of Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria was actually how little changed. Yes, physically, the components were way better. The board wasn't foam core and the cards weren't sleeved cut sheets of printer paper, for example. But the actual graphic design was pretty much identical to the prototypes we got. The components here are top of the line. You get silkscreen, warden, and scoring meeples, with each faction having its own unique shape. Lots of silkscreen custom dice, thick, easy-to-read player boards, a very clear main board with great iconography, high quality cards. I only had two disappointments in regards to the components in Shadow Kingdoms of the Valeria. The first is that the plastic tiddly wink like chips that were in the prototype were replaced by cardboard tokens. These round tokens do look better, I gotta say, I and mean, they feature faction symbol on them, so it's very clear to see whose is whose. I was actually kind of hoping for some clear chips where you could see what was underneath once placed. Which would be nice, but would have likely made for a price point infeasible. Totally fair. Now, the second, though, and this one's a bigger complaint, is the back of the award cards. It took me a while to even notice they're different from each other. I'm not sure why this wasn't made as clear as day. Like, it's a back of a card that you don't see once you start playing. But you have to sort these cards by their backs at the beginning of play to get things set up. It's actually become a running joke with my group to hand any new player this deck and ask them to sort them while I'm teaching the game and see how long it takes for them to notice the difference between the cards and properly sort them. 
Overall, though, component-wise, this game is great-looking, features excellent graphic design that actually helps during gameplay. Well, next up, let's move on to a short overview of play. So one thing that didn't change at all from the prototype is how Shadow Kingdoms of Valyria plays. So we're going to make this very quick and very high level. For a more in-depth overview, go back to the preview we mentioned earlier, either on the blog, YouTube, or on episode 96. So to play Shadow Kings of Valeria, you're each going to choose a faction, take all the components for that faction, set up your player board with starting gold and magic, and cover all the upgrade spots with conquest tokens, which are now cardboard. You also grab a random campaign map, pick which side to use, and put it next to your player board. Each of the five sections of the main board are seeded with dice. Gems and cards, including award cards, battle plans, and champions are placed on their spots on the map, and the game is ready to start. Now, each turn, players are going to take their warden and move it to a different spot from where they grabbed it from, either one of the five regions on the map or back on their player board in order to launch an attack. When a warden is placed on the board, the player will draft one of the dice from that region and then do the action associated with that region. The neat part here is the reward value of that action is based on the die value taken. Higher number dice provide better troops, which are needed for battles, but provide less awards, which honestly is one of the most brilliant parts of this game. Now, board actions include collecting gems that let you flip dice, hiring champions, each of which has either an instant reward or ongoing ability or endgame scoring opportunity, earning gold, used to pay for champions and battle plans, claiming awards, or gathering magic, which can be used to cycle the various card decks in play as well as improve drafted dice, or collecting battle plans. Now, once you have a battle plan and enough dice matching the troop types on that plan, you can launch an attack on Valeria. You do this by moving your warden to your player board and selecting which dice will fight. The values of the dice are totaled, any modifiers are applied, and you get victory points for how high the dice total is. After each battle, you then get to level up in a way by removing one of those campaign tokens from your board, which unlocks more options. You're then going to place it onto your campaign map, which can also award you bonuses for placing them next to other ones. But the game continues until a player competes their seventh battle, in which you finish the round and the player with the most victory points wins. Now, Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria also includes a solo mode where you pick a faction and compete against an AI adversary. Well, now that we've rev reminded you of how the game plays, let's move on to how we feel about this game now, over two years later, and having the production version in hand. So remembering when we first got this game and looking back at the preview and rereading in the blog, I gotta say we were all seemed pretty smitten with this game at the time. And we were clearly eagerly awaiting to see what its final form would be like. And it turns out, not that much different than its preview form. Oh. Yay! Yeah, except for physical component improvements and a better written rule book, this is exactly the same game we played two years ago uh, multiple times. Now, one of the things I appreciated then is how different this game felt from other Valeria games. Today, that's not as much the case as this game seems to have opened the doors for new types of games in the Valeria series. Just last week, we played a Valeria trick-taking game in the form of Thrones of Valeria. When we played a Valeria roll-and-write game in the form of Dice Kingdoms of Valeria. I, I, you really can't think of Valeria as a bunch of card-driven engine builders anymore, and I think this was the game that kind of changed that and bridged that gap. Though I do think this game, unlike, for instance, Thrones of Valeria, still feels like a relative of the original game. Yeah, it's it's a closer tie, but it it still needs what what's missing to me is the roll two dice to generate something. That that to me is the core of Valeria that didn't come in this game, but that's part of the game. You have to realize this isn't just another version of Card Kingdoms. Now, one of the things that is still unique about this game, as far as I can tell, there are, I have not played all the Valeria games anymore. At one point I had um is that flip of playing the bad guys, being the the monsters. So far, as far as I know, this is the only Valeria game where you play the monsters and not the defenders. And I've got to say, I, I do appreciate that theme shift. And while they could have just flipped the original, made it the same game, but from the opposing viewpoint, I like that they didn't and took a mm -hmm. different tact for how the villains go about their attacks on Valeria. I also still love the dice mechanisms of this game. I love the way that higher numbered dice are useful 
if not required to score well during battles, but they give you little to no reward when taking actions with them. This leads to some really interesting decision points, and you'll often find yourself being forced to draft a low number die just because you need the gold or you really want to buy a high cost champion. What's neat though is later in the game, after you've unlocked more ways to modify the dice by winning battles, you it's not so bad. Uh, you can draft a one. Actually, ones become way better because a single gem will flip that over to a six when your troops are ready to attack. Yeah, planning and mitigation are your friends. Laying that strong base as you go for later in the game is vital. Now, my biggest disappointment in this game, which is something I complained about two years ago and I'm not going to stop complaining about with the production copy, is a lack of asymmetry. The fight Despite the fact it sounds like an asymmetric game, you're picking different factions, there's orcs and gargoyles and goblins and different and gnolls and all these different armies to pick from, it's not actually asymmetric. The only difference between these factions, besides their color and their meeple, is that each has a power that you do have to unlock that lets you use a different colored die as wild. I don't consider that asymmetric. It was really hoping that the final version of the game would have some kind of bonus that was different for each faction. This was something we reported, and I know other reviewers reported when trying the prototype, but they did not act on it. And we all know your love of asymmetry. Well, yeah. But not everyone is maybe as eager for that. And importantly, it's not easy to differentiate and maintain a game balance. So they made a call on this one and chose balance. Yeah, I think also simplicity. The fact that you don't have to learn how to play different factions differently is also part of it. Yes, I love asymmetry and I would have liked it. It's an optional rule. That's all you need, optional rule. Now, the other problem I found with this game, and this only exists because I've been playing it for two years because the game's that good. It still hits my table regularly, is that it does start to feel a bit the same. And I think that lack of asymmetry might be part of this problem. Every faction does play the same. It doesn't matter which one you're playing. They're all identical. There are some gameplay trends I started to notice, especially playing with experienced players. Early in the game, everyone's going to be grabbing those fives and sixes because that's what you need. Players are going to fill their campaign board based on what award is up, which just makes sense. There's an award that gives you points for having your board filled out in a certain order. Well, of course, people are going to fill it out in that certain order. Similarly, battle plans. They're going to look at the awards. If the award is for three siege engine battles, you're probably people are going to grab the siege engine battles. And I got to say, the campaign marker on influence is the first or second one to be pulled off every game I played. Now, this only actually became a problem after quite a few plays. Like, I didn't even notice this our first five plays. Um, as we've done said multiple times on the show, we try to play everything five times. When we did the preview, we played it actually more than five times. Didn't notice this at all. It's only after two years of multiple plays, we started to see it. Deanna was actually the first person to note it and was like, you know what, I'm, I, I kind of had enough of that game. It starts to feel the same. And I got to say, it took me a few games after that for me to acknowledge this as a potential problem. Note I'm saying acknowledge, because I don't have this problem myself. I still enjoy the game. I like trying different things, but definitely have met players who are like, yeah, it's, it's, it's good, but it always feels the same. Now, while this may be an issue for long term, there aren't many groups who are going to play a game as often and back to back as we often do for reviews. Mm -hmm. So the issue may not stand up as much to a group who's only playing it a couple of times a month or less. Totally true. So overall, Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria is a very solid and enjoyable part of the Valeria universe. It was the first game of the series to do something totally different, and I do think that opened up the door for more game types with the Valeria name on it. And I have to appreciate that for this game. This is a very tight, well-balanced dice drafting engine building worker placement game. So I personally wish there was just that little bit more asymmetry. Do you hear that daily magic? New player boards? Maybe in a Kickstarter that's live right now? Yeah, I had, so Sean, Sean mentioned that, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure, and I looked it up, and sure enough, the currently live Kickstarter for the latest expansion has player board overlays, and every faction gets its own asymmetric power. So thank you, Daily Magic. But we're not talking about an expansion here, so right now, it's a minor problem in Shadow Kings of Valeria. 
If you dig into building games, honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. This this isn't the heaviest one out there. It's no Vital Lacerda, but it's a nice slow build up of doing more stuff, collecting more dice to get bigger totals to score more points. If you group likes to play a mix of engine building games, this would be a great additional option. Maybe not the best game you play every week, but something great to have in the mix. If you've enjoyed other Valeria games, you'll want to check this one out. Just don't expect another card-driven resource management tableau builder. This is a very different style of Valeria game. Now, if you're looking for your next lifestyle game, something you get together and play every weekend or play six times in one night, you may want to avoid this one, at least without the forthcoming expansion. Gameplay in Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria can start to feel repetitive, though it does take a lot of plays to get there. And I will say, based on what it seems like the average trend in board games, most players and groups won't get there. But I do know there are people out there that get their lifestyle games and play them over and over. Not sure this would be the best choice for you. Personally, I am so glad we chose to preview this game two years ago. And I'm glad that it's finally back in print and it's available to more gamers so they can discover this game for the first time. I, I'm glad we were able to talk about it and finally got this review done and, and can share the Valeria love. I look forward to checking out the existing expansion next. That's that's next on my list is to try that out. And then perhaps the newly funded one coming out later this year. Well, that wraps up our return to Valeria. I hope you enjoyed the ride. If you've played this game or other games in the Valeria series, we'd love to hear your thoughts on some of those games in the comments. Now, besides the time taking the time to check out our original preview, I did write up a written version of this review over at tabletopbellhop.com, and I welcome you to check that out as well.